Welcome to the second presentation in the Common Law series. In this presentation, I will be covering Defences Against the Dark Arts, how you can set yourself up to be resilient to attacks from the government, their cronies and their agents. As usual, there is a disclaimer. This is not advice, but purely for educational purposes. It is as much of a learning experience for me as it is for you, and all I am doing is passing on what I have learned and am learning. I do not hold any law degrees, law certifications or law qualifications. Whilst all care has been taken to provide accurate information, it cannot be guaranteed. Testing of common law has been done with the police and in the courts. However, not all cases have been successful, as the words and processes used can sometimes trip you up. And now for a recap of common law. There are three systems of law operating in parallel in Australia at the moment. There is natural law, which is the law endowed with, with us by our Creator. In the Australian legal system, the Creator is known as Almighty God. Our Creator granted us inalienable rights. The codification of these inalienable rights is common law. It is the law of the land and soil jurisdiction and is based on local judgments handed down by judges over centuries. We inherited this from England. It requires you to stand as a living man or a living woman in knowledge and responsibility. The third system is Roman civil law, also known as government law or state law. It is admiralty or maritime law or law of the sea. It is also the law of the dead or corpus juris. The terms they use are legal, not lawful. It also presumes that you're a subject of the state and then you consent to this by your silence or your submission. Our inalienable rights are given up to assume the rights granted or taken away by the state if you fall under their jurisdiction. We exchange with them using contracts. Both sometimes the contracts are known and sometimes they're not. It is a racket, also inland piracy. There is a hierarchy of jurisdictions. At the top is the Creator or Almighty God. Interestingly, that God is a legal term for granter of dominion. Under the Creator, we have the natural person, also known as the living man or the living woman. Under that, we have all the artificial constructs, which are governments and trusts. And if you fall under government jurisdiction, you are a subject, which includes corporations, citizens, person, and your name in capital letters. The government is brought into existence by a document. This is no different from any other corporation. They are incorporated bodies or fictional or dead bodies. To interface with this dead body or corporation, you also need to become a corporation. This is done by creating your legal fiction also known as straw man, and there's a trust set up for you called a Sestui QV Trust. It's a trust for those who are presumed to be lost at sea. Under the state law system, you are presumed dead or lost at sea when you are registered for birth and a legal fictional corporation is created for you. Your name in capital letters, or Capitus Diminutio Maximus, is your corporation. It brings you under the jurisdiction of the government corporation. The government corporation then uses you as your legal fiction as a pledge and collateral to borrow money from the international banking cartel. Your income taxes are used to pay the repayments and interest on these loans. Legal fiction interfaces with the government's legal fiction through contracts. Normally contracts have guiding principles meeting of the minds or mutual benefit, consideration, which is payment or exchange, full disclosure, and the ability to voluntarily agree, as well as the capacity to agree. The government corporation contracts do not have full disclosure, nor do they usually have voluntary agreement or capacity, so they are covert contracts. In fact, they are unconscionable under their own laws. However, as you are a corporate fiction by the capitalisation of your name, normal contractual principles don't apply, as you are a subject, serf or a slave. 
It is also presumed that you agree to these contracts by your consent of silence, non-dispute and non-repudiation, or your submission, where you submit your name on a form using block letters. You can stand under another jurisdiction called common law and repudiate government jurisdiction. To stand under common law, you need to fulfil the following principles. The primary one is you do not infringe upon the inalienable rights of others, including their property. You fulfil your contractual obligations and you stand in full capacity uh, as knowledgeable, responsible and liable. This means that children, the incapacitated, the ignorant and the irresponsible cannot stand under common law. And we have to actively non-consent, which means we say something like, I am a living man or a living woman and stand under common law. I do not consent to any other jurisdiction. Now let's compare the terms used in common law versus those in civil law. Under common or natural law, we are substance, we are the living. Under civil law, we are the artificial, dead, legal fictions, corporations. Under common, we are people, we are man, we are woman. Under civil law, person or persons, a resident, a citizen, a taxpayer or a driver. Under common law, we are an agent in commerce. Under civil law, we are government or employee. Under common law, we use gold, silver and other commodities as money. Under civil law, there are promissory notes or currencies, credits or bills of exchange. Under common law, we have agreement, non-infringement and law. Under civil, there are statutes, acts and directives. Our master under common law is God Almighty or our creator. The master under civil law is the state. Under common law, crimes come with a victim. They are a breach of the peace. Under civil law, there are victimless crimes, which in Australia are often known as offences against Regina or the Crown. Under common law, we have contractual obligations and due care. Under civil law, taxes, permits, penalties and fees. Under common law, people assume responsibility. Under civil law, the government assumes responsibility. Under common law, we have intrinsic inalienable or sometimes unalienable rights. In civil law, we have privileges, benefits, entitlements, civil rights and human rights. Under common law, we are sovereign. We are a living man or a living woman. Under civil law, we are a slave, a serf, a subject, a straw man, a corporation or a creature of statute. The term used for common law is lawful. The terms used for civil law is legal. So how do you become a living man or a living woman standing under common law? Well the thing is you're already a natural person, a living man or a living woman, but the state presumes you're a corporate entity via your birth certificate. So you need to take some action because your silence is your consent. You need to change all your public documents like your driver's license, passport, bank stuff. You need to register your status as a living man or a living woman in a common law registry. You can make a public declaration of your change in status and claim the rights and dispute uh, your former status and former covert contracts. You can trademark and copyright your legal fiction names. You need to learn the ways of common law and contracts. You need to learn the catchwords and catchphrases that the officers of the state use to drag you into their jurisdiction. And you need to learn the responses to those catchwords and prepare notices and contracts that are on your terms. Firstly, changing your public documents. Your public documents are contracts. Your driver's license is a contract with the Department of Transport. You can change the signature on your Department of Transport driver's license by adding all rights reserved under your signature. I have done that. You can also change your passport, your bank accounts, your credit cards, etc. The term all rights reserved has a dual purpose. Firstly, you have copyrighted your signature. 
And secondly, under the Uniform Commercial Code 1308, you do not give up any other legal rights or ability of, for recourse by performing obligations, duties or signing documents. You can also use the term without prejudice. There's a link uh, giving you a, a web page that will give you a bit more detail on that. Next, you can register your status with the Common Law Registry. Go to commonlaw.earth and there is a way for you to record your live birth rather than your state-run birth certificate, which is really a certificate of death. This becomes the representation of the flesh and blood you. And there's a UK-based one as well, commonlawcourt.com. You can also register your marriage, your car, your property and your business under common law. You can also register your protection under the original Sovereign Tribal Federation. And you will fall under their protection and their law so that you can walk the lands and be free from trespasses upon you by officers of the state. Back in 1992, there was a landmark High Court case in Australia, Eddie Marbo versus the State of Queensland. The High Court found that Australia was not terra nullis uh, under the British Crown, but in fact inhabited and owned by the original inhabitants. They have jurisdiction and lawful ownership of the lands. The government does not. Next, you need to make a public declaration of your status. Create an affidavit of status as a living man or a living woman, with all your rights listed and all your repudiations. You need to give the respondents to your affidavits some time to rebut that. They need to rebut in substance and in fact. You need to have your affidavits witnessed by a public notary. You can send it to the Queen, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, the governors, the premiers, and possibly the uh, police commissioners. If you are Catholic, probably a good idea to send it to the Pope, as when you were baptised, the church claimed your soul. Once you have a time default, you can have it signed off as a default judgment. You can do this at the Supreme Court for a few hundred dollars. You can get it done at the common law courts and or by two JPs. Two JPs uh, apparently have the same authority as a Supreme Court Justice. Once you've done this, you are now no longer a legal fiction, a corporate subject, lost at sea or presumed dead. You are now recognised as a living man and or a living woman. It would be a good idea to copyright and trademark your legal fiction. You can do this in your affidavits of status as a living man or a living woman. It should include the ownership of your names and your flesh and blood as well as their derivatives. Your names uh, in all its variations of capitalization and lower case and title case, uh, any of your genetic and biological material like your DNA and fingerprints and your blood, any biometric algorithms which would be your fingerprints, iris or retina scans, your gait, facial recognition, even your genetic code. You can also copyright and trademark your images and your voice recordings, and which include your photographs. I strongly suggest you learn the ways of common law. So go through these series of videos, understand the structure and the substance of common law. You could even join a common law assembly in your local area. Learn how to use common law in everyday situations when you're dealing with governments and their agents. They're in the and back end of this presentation, there are links to videos of people using common law principles to dismiss the police and even one that dismisses a magistrate. Be a good idea to create cheat sheets of all the words and phrases to look out for and how to respond to them. And everything comes down to uh, practice. The more practiced you are, the better you will be at uh, claiming common law and using it. So. Get some scenarios uh, together with your friends and family and practice them till they become automatic and organic. Then you will stand in confidence. You will also need to learn the ways of the contract. 
Everything you do with a government is a contract. It falls under equity law. You can learn how to turn these forms that you get from the government into contracts on your terms. Remember, contracts need the meeting of the minds, consideration and full disclosure. You can create your own contracts for engagement with public and private officials. I would suggest a police engagement contract, a government official engagement contract and a door knockers contract. You can also do conditional consent forms. As you are presumed to be property of the state under Roman civil law, all the property that you think you own is actually theirs. You need to rebut this. To do this, you can create notices of private property. That can cover your home, any other property that you might have, e.g. rental properties, any cars or vehicles, all of your tangible assets, uh, household goods, any digital assets that you happen to have, uh, and also you, any financial assets uh, like your superannuation fund, your share portfolio, any cash uh, you have, and, and any bank accounts you have, and also your business if you happen to run one. You can create trespasses and application to enter notices. As you have private property, you are the master. So create some application to enter forms for public officials and agents. You can put on things like fees for engagement, so you can charge them uh, for talking to you. You can add warnings and you can say who can and cannot enter the property. If they're agent from the government, uh, they are engaging in the contract by entering the premise or knocking at the door. You can reserve the right to eject anybody at any time. The most important thing, record everything. Now for some hacks for dealing with agents. Remember that attitude is everything. Most importantly, be clear, polite, respectful and assertive. Never be abusive, disrespectful or aggressive. That will just give them an excuse to do something bad to you. Learn the words and processes of common law and understand the structures and governances. This will give you confidence. Stand straight and look them in the eye. Use an authoritative and deep voice when speaking. Breathe deeply and speak from the diaphragm. Your serotonin levels should increase and that raises you in social hierarchy. Remember to hold, not fold. And they will try and intimidate you. So, all you need to do to break the intimidation is ask them, why do you feel it's necessary to try using bully or standover tactics on me? That's the behaviour of thugs, criminals, Nazis and 12 year old children. Is that really you? Remember, you always have the upper hand. Agents and cops have responsibilities and obligations under office. They do not have rights if they do not have jurisdiction. You have all the rights and you can flip in and out of their jurisdiction when it suits you. You can use both common law and Roman civil law for your advantage and their disadvantage. Knowledge, preparation, practice and confidence are the keys. One of the principles in when you're engaging with agents is that the person asking the questions has the power. The first thing you need to do when approached or confronted by agents is start recording video of the engagement. You need to ask questions of their identity, their authorization and jurisdiction, and they're obligated to provide this. So you could ask questions like, Kindly state your name and number and show me your identity card and where you are based, please. Then you ask them some setup questions. Are you obligated to comply with state and federal government acts and statutes? They will generally say yes. You can also ask them, are you obligated to comply with the articles of the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act 1901? They will probably say yes. You ask them, did you take an oath? to keep the peace and uphold the law, uh, if they happen to be law enforcement officers. Then you ask, under what act are you authorised to approach or confront me? The next thing you need to do is ask the agents to prove their authorisation. 
You can ask questions like, can you show me your authorization to act under the public health order, or any other act for that matter? You can ask, how does the corporation, known as the State of Queensland, have jurisdiction over me, the living man or living woman? Obviously, if you're not in Queensland, use your own state. You can also ask, have I committed a crime or are reasonably suspected of committing a crime against a person or a person's property? Remembering that under common law, the only crimes are those against a person or a person's property. There are no offences against Regina under common law. You can also ask, am I under investigation for anything? You are not obliged to help a police officer with any investigation, so you can say, I decline to assist you in your investigation. You can also ask, am I under arrest? Am I detained or am I free to go about my business? If you're not under arrest or not detained, then you're free to go about your business. So you say to them, then I'm going about my business. Thank you for your concerns and for keeping the peace. Have a nice day. Then you can ask the agents to prove to you that you are an issue. You can ask questions like, am I a named person under a public health order or a biosecurity act? Can you show me where I have been serviced with a public health or a biosecurity control notice? Uh, you set them up by asking questions like, are you aware of section 109 of the constitution, which says that if a state's legislation is inconsistent with Commonwealth law, then that part of the state law is invalid. You can also say something like, are you aware that section 5123A of the constitution says that no medical services can be conscripted? And then you ask, are you aware that masks, injections, movement restrictions under public health orders are medical services and are therefore invalid? You can give yourself some form of diplomatic immunity by naming your jurisdiction. You can do this by saying something like, I'm a living man or I'm a living woman. Or better still, ask the question, am I a living man or am I a living woman? If they say yes, they have confirmed your jurisdiction. You can also say, I stand under common law and the protection of the original sovereign tribal federation on Yugara or your local tribal land, and I do not consent to your jurisdiction. You say something like common law and indigenous law are both the law of the land and soil. Your jurisdiction is corporate and maritime and therefore invalid. As a living man or a living woman under common law and indigenous pr protection, I am free to traverse this land peacefully. As a living man or a living woman, I have inalienable rights, which include the right to move freely without trespass, intimidation, battery or assault. Show me your authorization giving you jurisdiction over me, a living man or a living woman, standing under common law and not consenting your, to your jurisdiction. They generally have no responses for these. It may be time to start pushing the agents back. If they are pushing you a little bit, you can say to them, you're the one breaching the peace as well as threatening and intimidating me. That is a crime under your own laws punishable by jail time and making you liable to personal damages. I demand that you cease and desist and stand down immediately and continue on your way. As this is probably your first time, consider this a warning. Next time I will press charges and claim damages. If they're not complying or answering, you ask the question or say the statement three times. This provides you with an opportunity to lawfully answer on their behalf. And that then constitutes a fact in law. So you ask the question for the first time, for the second time, and for the third time. Anything that is video, digital or paper evidence or affidavits must be backed by a witness to a statement or a video. Evidence is considered to be true if it comes out of the mouth of two or more witnesses. Your video is a witness. If you have set up a contract with the government and they have accepted the contract by default, you can start uh, having a bit of fun with the agents. So if a cop approaches you, you can say, 
Well, I'm happy to chat with you today, but to be fair, you should be aware that I have a standing contract with the police and the government, which includes any fees for any engagement, obstruction and or detainment. My fees are 30 ounces of 99.99% pure silver coins per 15 minutes in 15 minute increments and per engaging and detaining officer. Your active engagement with me triggers performance under this contract. The clock starts now. I'm sure your superiors will be pleased when they receive the bill, especially as, you now, as you've now been notified. Are you really up for a right royal bollocking? That should make even the hardened, most hardened of uh, police officers start to get a little bit weak at the knees. You need to learn all the catchwords and the catchphrases. Officers of the state use special words and phrases, or if you like, incantations and spells, to drag you into their jurisdiction. Once in, it's hard to escape, so learn them. Remember, there are two dictionaries. There's the Oxford English Dictionary, is, which covers all the stuff that we think we understand, and there's the Black's Law Dictionary, which covers all the words that they understand and you do not. So when they ask the question, do you understand? Uh, to you, it sounds like, oh, uh, do, do you comprehend what I'm saying? In fact, it doesn't actually say that. Under Black's Law Dictionary, it means, do you stand under my authority? So that's a trick, word, a trick phrase. The responses to that are, no, I do not consent to your jurisdiction, or no consent, no contract. And if they're after your name, date of birth and address, you can say, I do not consent to give you my name, date of birth or address. They ask, why aren't you wearing a mask? You can say, you have no right to demand that information, so I ha do not consent to provide that information. You may have to re refer to the relevant sections under the Privacy Act of 1988. If they ask, are you John Smith? You can say, no, I'm the personal representative of that person. That name is my private property and is copyrighted. If they ask, is that your address? You can say, no, I live in a house located there. If they ask, are you the driver? You say, no, I am conveyancing myself and my family and friends in this car. Is that your vehicle? No, it's my private property. Are you the owner or the homeowner? No, this is my private property. Are you the resident? No, I live here. Are you the lessee? No, I rent this property. Is that your child? No, he or she is my property, or he or she is my offspring. Is that your husband or your wife? No, he or she is my property, or my man or my woman. Are you a person, an individual, which is a corporation under their laws? No, I'm a living man, or I'm a living woman. Are you a human being? No, I'm a living man, or a living woman. Under Black's law, the definition of a human is a monster, or a half-breed, so be careful of that one. If you are obliged to provide your particulars to a police officer, Always start with saying that I am under duress. Your name, you, you start with, I am a living man or a living woman known as John of the family Smith. Your address, I inhabit the house at 1313 Mockingbird Lane in the town of Mockingbird Heights in the state commonly known as Queensland in the landmass known as Australia. For your date of birth, let's say 1st of January 1980, to the best of my knowledge. I don't remember the day specifically, but that's what my parents told me, which is obviously hearsay. Writing your address officially. You write your name with a little copyright symbol afterwards. Your address will be care of wherever you want your um, mail to be sent to, whether it's a post office box or your street address. and. The suburb is Mockingbird Heights, the state, Queens-Land or Queensland State or New South Wales State. And when you put the postcode in, put near, say, 4919 with little square brackets around it.
and if you need to put Australia, you say Australia continent. If you happen to be detained or arrested, make sure you say no consent, I do not consent, or no consent, no contract, or all of the above. And remember to provide your name, address and date of birth as per the previous slide. Do not say anything else, do not answer any questions, and remember you are not obligated in any way to assist in any investigation whatsoever. Police will use your words against you in court. The prosecution has to prove a case in law and in fact, and do not give them any ammunition. You only need to say something in court that provides a reasonable doubt or dispute a point or a process of law uh, for your case to be won, if you're the defendant. To render any statement inadmiss inadmissible or a contract that unenforceable, sign or write uh, without prejudice and all rights reserved above and below your signature. And make sure uh, you put under duress in square brackets after your signature. It will invalidate any statement that you make. We all love receiving mail, except when it's from the government. So one thing you must do is never ignore letters from the government. You must act promptly. If you receive a letter and you don't want it, and it's addressed to the resident or another unspecified person, which happens with the census documents, for instance, or it's addressed to your name in uh, capital letters in a windowed envelope, or there's no evidence of the sender's name, you can return it, but make sure you write on it, unclaimed, no consent equals no contract, return, to sender for cause without dishonour. Now, word of caution, you may want to deal with renewals and fines differently, so your licence renewal. Remember, silence is considered a defaulted or consent. And if you've got, um, uh, it's complicated, maybe you can ask for an extension of time. Uh, they will usually grant that. Here's an encounter with the police where a white Irishman sunbathing on a Sydney beach during lockdown uses common law to dismiss the cops. Unfortunately, I cannot show the video in this presentation as uh, for some reason there's way too much echo and it becomes a little garbled. What you, you can click on the link uh, uh, below on YouTube, have a look for yourself and look out for all the catchwords and the responses. The police open by asking for his identity uh, because he's under suspicion of committing an offence, which is an investigation. And as you've heard before, you are not obliged to help uh, an officer in an investigation, which includes providing your identity. Uh, the Irishman talks about how common law overrides a public health order and that he has inalienable rights under common law and that the police may be committing an offence. Um, he says that no ID is required unless an offence has been committed, which it hasn't because it's only under investigation. He's not consenting and he even offers to contract with the police for a fee. They start backing down around that point and uh, because they know that uh, it would cost them a lot of money. And at the end the police pull out the do you understand the Public Health Order Act uh, card, which translates to, do you stand under my authority under the Public Health Order Act? So have a look, watch it a few times perhaps. Uh, it, it is a really good learning process. And here we have a few links of common law in action. Uh, one of this, uh, the really good ones to watch is the first one, which a man dismisses a magistrate in a common law override of a court proceeding in Australia. And the second one is the Irishman on the Sydney beach, which I mentioned in the previous slide. And it's all followed by a few others from the UK and the USA and Australia, where uh, people uh, uh, override or dismiss the police using common law. The last one's quite an interesting one. It's a, an Indigenous Freedom Day protest in Australia where the Indigenous elder 
uses common law, or re rather he uses uh, Indigenous law to override the police. So feel free to have a look at uh, those. I will uh, uh, copy all those links in in the uh, space below the uh, video and you'll be able to click on them and enjoy them at your leisure. With all of this information, uh, it's not really me. I've only uh, discovered this by going through all the works that other, all the hard work that other people have done. I stand on the shoulder of giants. So here are a few links you might want to look up um, to if you wanted to dig a little deeper into common law and the resources there. Um, feel free to um, have a look. Well, that's about all I have in this particular episode of the Common Law series. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me on the link below and I'll answer uh, to the best of my capability. Uh, cheerio and thanks for watching.